Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Okay guys, so hey, for today's video, I have a bit of a different type of topic for all of you than what I normally discuss on this channel. You see, ever since I started making videos on YouTube, I get asked one question more often than most. And that question is, which Titanic movie do I think is the best? Now, usually when people ask me this question, they're wanting me to choose between one of two movies, either A Night to Remember from 1958 or the James Cameron Titanic film from 1997. Now, just to be clear, there are quite a few Titanic movies out there. There's a one from 1953, there's SOS Titanic, and there's even a weird Titanic animated film where apparently a giant octopus tries to keep the Titanic from breaking in two. Yeah, we're going to pretend that that film doesn't exist. Okay. Okay. But anyway, what I'm going to do for this video, just to kind of simplify things, is try to pick which Titanic film I think is best between the two films that people usually ask me to choose between, A Night to Remember or the James Cameron film. Ultimately, which movie do I think you should watch in order to get the best recreation of what happened with the Titanic story? That's ultimately what I'm going to try to answer in today's video. All right, guys. Well, hey, with the intro out of the way, let's now get into this very fascinating topic. Okay, so we're going to start off this video by first discussing the Titanic film released by James Cameron in the year 1997. This film follows the love story between two people, a man named Jack and a woman named Rose, who meet on board the world's biggest and most luxurious ocean liner, the Titanic, while the ship is sailing across the Atlantic on its maiden voyage. Now, Jack and Rose are two people that come from vastly different parts of society. And due to how society functioned during the time of Titanic, these two people should have never met at all. However, due to a series of um, unusual circumstances that happened with Rose on the Titanic's maiden voyage, the two happened to meet, and then over the course of the rest of the film, you see these two people get to know each other and eventually fall in love, and then the movie just kind of follows the whole traditional Hollywood love story. Honestly, when you think about it, the best way to describe the whole relationship between Jack and Rose in the movie Titanic is Titanic with a Romeo and Juliet love story. That's literally the best way to describe it. Now, it should be noted that Jack and Rose were not real people that were on board the Titanic. Their love story is entirely fictional. However, what James Cameron, the man who directed the film, wanted to do when he was making this movie was he wanted everything going on around Jack and Rose to be as historically accurate as possible. And because of this, you see people who are really on board the Titanic interact with Jack and Rose as the maiden voyage is carried out. You see Captain Smith, First Officer William Murdoch, you see Bruce Ismay, you see Thomas Andrews, you see Molly Brown, you even see John Jacob Astor and his wife Madeline. In. You see all of these incredible, historically accurate people interact with these fictional characters of Jack and Rose, and how they all spent their time on board the world-famous Titanic while the maiden voyage of this legendary vessel was underway. Now, the historical accuracy of the James Cameron film goes way beyond that of just having Jack and Rose interact with people who are really on board the Titanic. Basically, what James Cameron wanted to do when he was creating this movie was he wanted it to be like you traveled back in time and were on board the Titanic during its maiden voyage. So he did everything he could to try to make every aspect of the film as historically accurate as possible. And you see this everywhere. I mean, I kid you not, the dude literally rebuilt a good chunk of the Titanic to use as a set for the movie. I mean, it's absolutely insane how much dedication and work and money James Cameron put into this. I don't know if you all remember how far over budget the Titanic film was when it was being made. But throughout the entire film, you see the fictional characters of Jack and Rose interact with things that were really going on on board the Titanic during its maiden voyage. Like the big party that was held in third class, that really happened on board the Titanic. When all of the characters go to eat dinner, they actually go to the first class dining room on the Titanic, that's historically accurate. And a lot of the deleted scenes in the Titanic film, which they just could not put it into the main movie due to time constraints, 
really did a lot to add even more detail to the story of Titanic that James Cameron wanted to tell in this movie he just didn't have time for. All right, so with the mentioning of the deleted scenes, I think this is the appropriate place to now talk about my biggest criticisms of the Titanic film. Now guys, don't take what I'm saying out of context here. I absolutely love the James Cameron film. However, you all wanna know which Titanic film I think is the best to get a good understanding of what really happened on the real Titanic on the night of the sinking, so we have to talk about this. You see, where the James Cameron film spends so much time talking about the fictional love story between Jack and Rose and everything they were doing on the Titanic's maiden voyage and eventual sinking, the film simply doesn't have enough time to go over all of the real events that happened on board the Titanic on the real night of the sinking. Now, the film does try to make up for this the best it can because when you watch the movie, you definitely do get a general overview of what happened on the real Titanic on the night of the sinking. It's just not explained to the level of detail that I would like. But like, for example, you understand that the Titanic was the biggest ship in the world at the time. You understand that the ship did not have enough lifeboats or everybody on board. You get a brief ex explanation of how the flooding proceeded through the Titanic. You see Murdoch letting men into the boat. You see Light Toller being stubborn and saying no, women and children only. You get what I'm saying. You get the basic overview of what happened, but it's just not explained to the level of detail that I would like. Like the film only briefly goes over the fact that the Carpathia was the rescue ship. The film completely ignores the whole Californian story. James Cameron did try to put that in there, but he just didn't have time to, so it's in a deleted scene. Now, you Titanic James Cameron film fans would probably know that James Cameron did say the Californian is briefly shown in the James Cameron film. However, I went and looked for it, and basically what he said was is that there's one shot in the movie where you can see a tiny pixel of light that represents the Californian, but I went and looked for it. I looked for it in the Blu-ray version. I did not see it, so whatever, but anyway, you get what I'm trying to say here. The film does try to explain the Titanic story as best it can, but where it has to focus on the love story between Jack and Rose, it simply does not have enough time to explain everything to the detail that I, as a Titanic historian, would have liked to see. Now, with that being said, just because the movie doesn't have enough time to explain all of the details that happened with the real sinking of the Titanic doesn't mean that the movie is lacking in details. A lot of them are there, it's just not very well explained in the film. However, if you're someone who goes into the movie being already intimately familiar with the story of the Titanic, you will catch all of these real life details or these historically accurate details, I should say, left and right. Like the steam venting from the funnels not long after the iceberg impact, that's incredibly well done. The whole drama with collapsible lifeboats A and B and how B got flipped upside down and A slid down from the roof of the officer's quarters, that's very well done. The passenger who slipped when she was trying to climb into a lifeboat and she ended up almost falling in between the lifeboat and the deck of the Titanic down to the water below, but they grabbed her in the nick of time. Like, all of these details are in the movie. They're just not properly explained. And you really wouldn't think that much about them unless you went into the movie already knowing about it. Now, there's one last thing we need to talk about with the James Cameron film before we jump over to A Night to Remember. Throughout this entire video, so far I've been talking about how James Cameron tried to make his movie be as historically accurate as possible to the true story of Titanic around the Jack and Rose love story. Now, the thing is, if you go back and try to watch the movie today, you will notice a lot of historical inaccuracies with the film as well. A good example of this is how the Titanic raised up to such a high angle in the movie and then eventually broke in two. Well, both of these things that you see in the movie are incorrect. The Titanic did not raise up to such a high angle, and the way the ship broke in two was also different than what we see in the film. Another good example of a historical inaccuracy in the film, and is definitely my least favorite historical inaccuracy, is the one that shows how Murdoch died, you know, how Murdoch supposedly committed suicide on the Titanic. Now, this historical inaccuracy is based on a real Titanic myth 
a lot of historians out there like to say that they believe it was Murdoch who committed suicide on the Titanic during the sinking. However, I've gone back and looked into this. I've read testimony. I've read books on the subject. And honestly, I'm not convinced that Murdoch was the officer who committed suicide on the ship that night. If it did happen, I think it happened somewhere around collapsible lifeboat D. But anyway, I've already talked about all that in another video. If you would like to watch that video, I will include a link to it in the description below. But the thing is, you can't really hate on James Cameron for the historical inaccuracies in the film today because everything he put into that film is based on what we knew about the sinking of the Titanic in the year 1997. So based on what he knew at the time, I think he did a fantastic job overall with how he depicted the sinking of the Titanic in the film. There are definitely things I would change, like the Murdoch suicide thing, However, overall, I think he did a pretty good job with how he depicted the sinking based on what we knew about the sinking of the Titanic at the time. So ultimately, what are my final thoughts about the James Cameron film? Is this a good movie to watch for someone to get the story of the Titanic, the true story of Titanic, I should say? Well, ultimately, my answer is yes and no. And in case you're wondering why, well, I'll explain. You see, the thing about the James Cameron film is while it is a great introduction to the story of Titanic, I would argue that that is probably the film's best quality, where it doesn't do a very good job of explaining all of the small details that add up to the full story of Titanic, it's not the best movie to watch to get a full understanding of everything that happened on board the Titanic on the night of the sinking. But honestly, as I said earlier, I get why, because the film focuses on the fictional love story between Jack and Rose. Now, as far as the love story between Jack and Rose, it's what the movie primarily focuses on. And honestly, while I do think their love story is a little bit cheesy, especially the part where Jack tells Rose that she is the most amazingly astounding, wonderful girl woman he ever knew after what, three days? <laughs> I'm like, uh, dude. So uh, to all you ladies out there, I have a question for you. Let's pretend you started dating someone, okay? And this guy says to you everything that Jack said to Rose after you only knew him for three days. Like, uh, what would your all thoughts be on that? I imagine that most people would run for the hills. <laughs> so uh, that's what I mean when I say this story is kind of cheesy. But hey, it's a Hollywood love story. So you know what? Whatever. So to wrap everything up here, I would recommend the James Cameron film to someone who wants to learn about Titanic. However, they need to go into the film with the right state of mind. As I stated earlier, I think the film is fantastic for introducing people to the Titanic and its story. It's certainly what introduced me to the story of Titanic. Honestly, I don't know if I ever would have gotten into the Titanic if it wasn't for the James Cameron film. Back when I was a little kid, you know, that's when the James Cameron film came out. And I even remember the scene that the film was displaying when I first noticed it. It was the scene where Murdoch, or I'm sorry, where Light Toller told Smith, should we get the women and children into the boat, sir? And I think I was around six or seven at the time, and I asked my mom, or it was my grandfather, it was one of those two who was there with me, and I said, what is that? What's what's on the TV? And they said, Sam, that's Titanic. And I said, what's Titanic? And the rest is history. So the film is what inspired me. You know, it's what inspired me to want to learn as much as I could about the real event. And I'm sure so many of you out there watching this video right now have a similar story. And like I said, that is what I would argue is the film's best quality. And even though not everything in the film is completely true to history, I think enough is to make people go, holy cow, that happened? I mean, the film does do a pretty good job of putting you in the shoes of people who were on board the Titanic that night. So honestly, I applaud James Cameron for that. I think he did a fantastic job with the movie. So. In conclusion, would I recommend someone watch a James Cameron film to learn about Titanic? Yes, just remember that not everything in the film is true to history. And as long as you go into it with that right state of mind, I think the film is a great introductory tool for people to first get into the story of the RMS Titanic. All right, everybody, so hey, I hate to do this to all of you, but it took a lot longer than I planned to cover everything with the James Cameron film. So unfortunately, instead of jumping straight to A Night to Remember right now, we're gonna have to make this a multi-part series so I can give 
the A Night to Remember film the same care that I just gave the James Cameron film. So guys, I will see you guys in the next episode when we conclude this Which Titanic Film is Best to Watch series. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. It really helps out a lot. And thank you guys so much for being here. You all are awesome. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks to our Captain Level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support.